praise the Lord. It is another day's journey, and we are glad about it. I am Minister Gloria Pope. Amen. And in the absence of our pastor, Reverend John Scott Pope Jr., he is not here today, but we want to thank you for joining us for another episode of the Worship Hour. We can't thank God enough for what he is doing in our lives. And we are about to hear a dynamic message from this woman of God telling us that you got to do something. We can't sit on God. We have to do something. So she's going to come to us from 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verses 12. 16. 12 through 16. So get your Bibles, get ready, and let's go to church. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, oh God. Set a fire down in my soul. I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, oh God. Set a fire. Set a fire. Set a fire. Down in my soul.
to receive it there's a word for you and, and I just want to kind of go a little backwards today and um, um, you know let you know that I'm, I'm speaking to the unsaved right now and even maybe some of us who have lost your way our way and, and, and John 3 16 says for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent his son not in the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That is always for the unsaved. He, he said it 2,000 years ago, and he's still saying it today. He still loves us. He still knocking at the door he said the day you hear my voice harden not your heart open up the door i want to come in because i want to change your life amen amen we're going to uh do a part two today i know that some of us were here on the first sunday in may and uh we took our tech from second chronicles chapter 7 and uh, I'm going to recap a little bit and then we'll stand and read the scripture and continue on because I, I kept trying to get to the then 
See, when I started meditating on this, I said, Lord, this is too much for when one servant, I was getting overwhelmed, and I called the pastor. I said, Pastor, I can't do all of this. He said, well, just do something this time and wait till the next time. Just don't tell y'all. <laughs> okay, so this is fixing to be the part two of this. But to recap, the last time we, we spoke uh, or we heard this message, we came from the topic, everybody has a part to play. Because remember, we're, the subject that we're, the thing that we're looking at today, the word that we're looking at today is God's promises. God's promises, some of them you just ain't going to get because you want them. You're just not going to get by faith. You're going to have to do something to get these promises. His word is, is this word today is predicated, like I said upon it, if you, if you, then I will. Well, I've been trying to get to the then. So hopefully we're going to make it to the then today. So just a quick recap, the, the uh, meaning of the word chronicles, according to the Oxford Dictionary, is a factual written account of important or historical events in the order of their occurrence. The purpose of First and Second Chronicles represent God's point of view on Israel's past and announce that exile and disappointment was not the end of the story. So whatever you've been going through, folks, I just want you to know, my brothers and sisters, it's not the end of the story. Don't give up. He's still on the throne. And to show that God was still at work among his people, God still loves his people and is at work amongst us even today. When we deal with the word humble yourself, that's the first one that, that we deal with in the scripture and, and it's humble yourself. We got to humble ourselves before we can go to God in prayer and pray and the prayer reaches God. See, when you humble yourself before God, you're not going to start blaming sister so-and-so and brother so-and-so for what you have done. You're going to be looking at yourself. That's a self-evaluation because you're humbling yourself. Arrogance and pride will cause you to look at somebody else. Lord, I did wrong, but sister so-and-so made me. Or the devil made me. That is not true. We choose to do wrong. I, I like the song that the songwriter uh, wrote. He said, I'm sorry. I did it. I didn't mean to let you down. Jesus turned my life around and give me another chance. See, he knew he had done wrong. He knew he had done wrong. Same thing with David. David knew he had done wrong when he took when he took uh, Uriah's wife, he knew when the, when the prophet went before him and told him, he just fell down because he knew he had done wrong. He didn't try to say, well, her husband was gone. Well, I'm the king. I can have what I want to have. Not so. We are still under God's authority. So when we get ready to, to pray, remember, if a man abases himself, God will lift him up. Whoever exalts himself will be abased. Proverbs 16 and 18 says, Pride goeth before destruction, and a heart of spirit before a fall. So you got to be careful when you're dealing with pride, because more than likely, the pride that you take before the Lord, what you want to do is just hand that pride over to God and take on humility. But if you're taking pride before God and you can't see it, those prayers might not get answered like you want them to. This is what Luke in 18, 10 through 4 says. This is a man. These are two different men. One was a tax collector. One was a Pharisee. It says two men went up to the temple to pray. One a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, prayed this. God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortionists, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week, give tithes of all that I get. He's bragging on himself. We got no right to brag on ourselves when we go before God because without God, we can do nothing and we will be nothing. But the tax collector, he kept it short and simple. He said, Lord, God, be merciful to me. 
a sinner. And the word of God says, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. Rather than the other. You know how tax collectors were back in the day, and I don't know about today. But the tax collectors back then, they would take money for who they was working for, and they would take money for themselves from the people. So they were looked down on in, in a very, very bad way. So this man knew he had done wrong. So that was his prayer. God, be <laughs> merciful to me, a sinner. He knew he needed God's mercy. But, but this Pharisee here was praying out of his pride. I don't do this, or I do this, and I like that, and I'm not like other men. And I'm like, let me tell you something right, right quick while, before we keep going. Well, I'm just going to go over this way. When you hear the word of God, whether you're in church or whether you're reading the Bible, and you happen to come up in your mind, oh, sister so-and-so need to read this. Oh, brother so-and-so need to hear this. Well, you know you're doing this, right, in, in your mind. I know you say, I'm not pointing a finger. Yes, you are. In your mind, but how many coming back at you? So more than likely, if sister, brother, so-and-so ain't here today, this is for you today. Okay? And if, if, it's, if you hear something that you're not doing, okay. But don't just throw God off and say, Lord, I don't do that. Be ready to pray and say, Lord, am I doing that? See, that's the humble prayer. See, now we're getting to pray. See, these are all action words. Humble yourself and pray. Now we got to pray, and I want y'all to know right now, we are called to pray. You look at the predicament that our world is in, we are called to pray. We're called to pray. Not only that, we're called to pray on another level. We need to amp it up. It's time to amp it up. We were created to pray for such a time as this. See, I, the prayers of our forefathers got us to this point. They were created for such a time as that. We need to be praying for our young people because they're coming up on some stuff that they don't know what, what they're going to be seeing and stuff, and we don't either. So we need to pray because they're going to be praying for such a time as when they come up on it. So our prayer life has to be elevated. We got to start seeking God to pray, y'all. Seeking him to pray. When you go down, on your knees and you go this is what Matthew 6 and 6 6 and 6 says it says but thou when thou prayest enter into thy closet and when you shut the door pray to thy father in secret and thy father which seeth in secret shall openly reward thee just don't forget to come out the closet so that your father can openly reward you now I'm going to tell you this you have people that can stand up before God's people and pray a mighty prayer. They ain't praying at home. They ain't praying like they should at home. How do you know? Because something ain't right with the walk. You can look and see, y'all. It's visible. So when you pray, like I said, don't forget to come out your closet so that the Lord can openly reward you. And he wants to use you to bless other people. Now, when we're praying, now is the time to start seeking. Now, if you will open your Bibles to Second Chronicles, and we'll be looking at chapter 7. And we're going to look at verses 12 through 16. And the topic has changed somewhat today. Instead of we all have a part to play, it has become you have to do something. You have to do something. Will you please stand if you're able? Once you found that Second Chronicles 7, 12 through 16. Now Solomon had petitioned God in a prayer, and he prayed for the people. I'm glad we have a pastor that prays for the people too. I don't know about you, but one person's prayer can turn a whole lot of things around. So if more of us are praying, we can turn a whole lot more around, okay? Beginning at verse 12, then the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. When I shut up heaven, and there is no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land and send pestilence among my people. If my people 
who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. And this is where we are today. And seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Now my eyes will be opened, my ears attentive to prayer made to the prayer made in this place. For now I have chosen us to sanctify and sanctify this house that my name may be there forever. And my eyes and my heart will be there perpetually. You may be seated. Heavenly Father, as your word goes forth today, Father, I pray that we not leave out of here the same as came in, but, but that we leave with a better mindset, a, a greater view of who you are, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that you help us on our journey, that, that you remind us and, and help us to see that you are rooting for us and that you are on our side. I pray that you bless everyone that is here and that you bless every family that is represented here. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you. Amen. And amen. Seeking God's face. When we look at the word seek, because see, you're going to have to pray about seeking, too. You're going to have to pray about all of these things. When you look at the word seek, seek is an attempt to find something. The word comes from the Hebrew word, this is for pastor, balkash. Pastor likes us to go through the Hebrew stuff, okay? I'm just telling you. And it's very, very enlightening and insightful because when you look these words up in the Strong's Concordance or in some type of concordance, they might change the meaning of a scripture that you have been looking at and thinking, oh, this means this. But when you look at the meaning, the true meaning, the Hebrew meaning or the Greek meaning, it can change the whole way that the, the whole understanding of the scripture Okay, when, you, when you're looking for something, when, you, when you're seeking, seeking, which means to search out specifically in worship and prayer, to strive after, to make inquisition, make requests. The first mentioned principle is found in Genesis 37 and 16 when Joseph was telling this man, I seek my brothers. I, I, I'm thinking about uh, uh, something that I had read on the internet and, and this uh, man was making a difference between the word seek and search. He said the difference is that when you're on a search, you know they have the search teams, they don't know if they're gonna find what they're looking for or not. They don't know if it's going to be there, but when you're seeking, you know it's there. When we see God, we know he's there. Let, let, me, let me tell you something about a little search that I had to do one day. I, I went over to uh, the Family Dollar one day, and I um, thought I had my money in my purse. So I went inside, and, and I was getting ready to pay. And I said, Lord, where is that money? And I kept looking and looking and looking. I said, oh, God. I probably, when I was walking up, so I said, I probably dropped that money. I said, Lord, bless whoever gets it and help them to utilize it wisely. And so, um, and, and, and it was, I think it was a $100 bill, y'all. Um, so I was, uh, I, I, I know it was the Holy Spirit just unctioning me. Look under your car. And so I didn't look under there. I drove on and I looked. Now he said, look back around. I looked back around. That was my money. The wind had not blown it or, off or anything. It was right there. See, I was on a search. I didn't know if I was going to find that money or not. But when we seek, if you seek God, you are going to find him. Jeremiah, Jeremiah 29, 13 says, And ye shall seek me and find me when ye seek me with your whole heart. This requires action. You can't go up on God trying to seek him halfway and be lazy about it. You got to get up and do something. The Bible says that God is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him so we're going to have to be diligent about seeking God we got to raise the bar y'all it's time to raise the bar it, it might be time for us to get up out of the bed a little bit earlier it might be time for us to study a little more before we go to sleep it might be time for us to find some study tools to go around with the bible 
But, but we have to start to seek God with our whole hearts. When you seek, it is for a reason. We must seek God to be all that he wants us to be. If we don't seek God, we're not going to know who we are in Christ. We, we'll just go by what other people say we are. We'll go by who we think we are. And then we be all messed up when things don't go the way that, that we want them to go. The Bible says in Amos 5 and 4, I, I like to give you the word. The word, Matthew 7 and 7 says, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. Amos 5 and 4 says, for thus said the Lord unto the house of Israel, seek me and ye shall live. Psalm 34 and 10 says, The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Psalm 9 and 10 says, And they that know thy name shall put their trust in thee, for thou, Lord, has not forgotten them that seek thee. Psalm 105 and 4, Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. You know how we always asking God for stuff? We want him. We want this. We need that. And we need him. We do God a honey-do list. But here's what he says. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. One of the things that we need to seek God for, another thing that we need to seek God for also, is to seek him for understanding. The Bible says, in all thy getting, get understanding. We will not be able to comprehend the word of God with our flesh. So many times we try to understand the word of God with our, fret, with our flesh. And you know what we end up saying, folks? We sisters and brothers, uh, let me tell you, tell you like that. We, we, we end up saying, well, common sense will tell you that. God is not a common God, though. He's not a common God. The Bible says God is a spirit. Yeah. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The Bible says, let him that hath an ear hear what the spirit says. So you got to have an ear for this. You're going to have to seek God. The Bible says that the carnal mind is death. To be carnally minded is enmity against God. The carnal mind cannot comprehend the things of the light. This is your common sense. You, you just can't comprehend what, what God is doing. So you're going to have to ask for understanding of seeking him. You're going to have to ask for that. You're going to have to understand what God's word is saying to you. you, you, you anybody want to seek God? I, I, I know it, it's not easy, but guess who's helping you? You have a helper. He's called the Holy Spirit. See, too many times we want the Holy Spirit to do it all for us. No, he is a helper, and he will help us in all thy getting. Get understanding. And remember, to be carnally minded is death. Let, let, let me tell you what happens to people when they leave out the Holy Spirit and you try to see God on your own. Okay, this is a very dangerous situation here. Now, I, I'm going to say something, but I, I, I'm going to come back because I don't want you to get nothing twisted and get nothing wrong. Because this is not the reason for everybody's mental illness. But for some people's mental illness, some people have read the word of God and they left out the Holy Spirit and they never return. They will kill themselves. Okay, they have committed suicide because they couldn't understand it. Because they were trying to comprehend the word of God with their common sense mind. God is not a common sense God. This, this is what has happened. People end up on pills and, and nervous breakdowns. I can't do everything that God wants me to do. I just can't get it right. Well, I can't either. But I know somebody who's willing to walk along with me and to help me get to where I need to get, even if my mind is messed up, if I just seek, if I just seek, if I just seek him, he's going to give me what I need. I know that. See, we got to have faith. 
we got to have faith. Without faith, you know it's impossible to believe God, right, to please him, right? We, we got to have faith. But with God, all things are possible. You can find out who you are in Christ. Amen? Believe you can find out who you are. Now, you might not say I'm this, I'm that. But some things you know who you are. I'm a child of the most high God. I'm more than a conqueror through Christ who loves me. Come on, somebody. I can do more. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. This is who I am. That's who I am. And then we need to find out. We need to know who he is. Because when we know who he is, then we're going to find out who we are. When we are seeking God and we're seeking him for understanding, and now we need to seek him so that we can turn away from our wicked ways. I, I, I don't know about you, but I need some help to turn away from my sin. Because I'm going to tell you right now, some of us have been sinning for so long, it just feels good and it feels right. And that's another thing that will happen to us, too, if we're not seeking God for understanding. We'll think right is wrong and wrong is right. That's the ploy of the enemy, y'all. We'll start to accept everything that the world puts out there. Accept it. That's a ploy of the enemy, y'all. But when we're seeking him to turn from our wicked ways, when we look at the word turn in the Hebrew, it's pronounced shub. And one of its meanings is to deny. Any man that comes after me, this is what Jesus says, must first, first thing he's got to do is deny himself. Then he's going to take up his cross. This is, and follow him. And, and another word for this, for this, uh, for the word tor, uh, turn is to withdraw. See, sometimes we, you remember what I'm telling you, turn. Sometimes we think we're turning up, like that would be like a car, like turn. Corner. This, this is another type of turn that we're making, though. Turn, repent, change. I like what this old preacher told me one time. He said, exchange. Exchange your wickedness for the goodness of God. Give that wickedness to him and accept his goodness. Accept what he's telling you. Accept these promises that he is making to you. I, I like what David said when he said, create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Now, I like Isaiah, I, 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 that scripture, the, the chapter, Isaiah chapter 6, when he uh, had that vision. I, I think about that vision often. And, and just because he had a vision like that, you might not have one like that. But Isaiah looked up and he saw Jesus. Now, you might not see Jesus like he did, but you will see Jesus according to the way that God wants to present Jesus to you. Just don't miss him because he ain't looking. He's not looking like you expecting him to look. Ask God, Holy Spirit, show me Jesus. Show him to me every day. It's okay. I want to see Jesus. Show him to me. Isaiah knew that something had to happen on the inside of him. He said he needed to be clean, and, 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 and he said, I, I looked and I saw one of the seraphims. The seraphims, are, these are six-winged angels. With two wings, they covered their faces. With two wings, they covered their feet. And with two wings, they did fly. And he said, I saw one of them go to the altar, and with some tongs, he picked up a live coal, and he put it to my lips. And he said, now you're clean. See, Isaiah said, I, woe is me. When he saw Jesus, woe is me. When you see Jesus, you're going to say, woe is me, for I am unclean, and I live amongst a people who are unclean. Lord, help me. Help me. Because, see, when we're living amongst people that are unclean, it's easy for us to take on what we see the most of because we're walking in carnality when we do that and we're not using the faith that God has given to us. We're not using the understanding that he is giving to us. So we have to do something. 
If you notice, each instruction here is a verb. Action is required. When we do these actions, God wants you to know, you're not going to walk away empty. He's telling you, now we're on the then. Then, let me, let, me, let me go back a little bit. If my people, now God is talking to his people, those of us who have been saved. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. How far are you willing to go for the Lord? How much are you willing to do? What are you willing to let go of? See, because I can tell you right now, as, as parents, we can carry our children to a certain point, and then they do have to answer for themselves. I want to be able to carry my children as far as I can take them, as far as I can take them. When we see how the world has become, are we willing to humble ourselves and pray and seek his face and turn from our wicked ways or, or are we being being we are being called like i said to amp it up amp up our prayer lives we were created for such a time as this to pray about these situations whoever would have thought that we would have been seeing triple digit highs for this many days in a row, and y'all, we still here in our air, con my, my, the air conditioner is still working. Whoever would have thought that? Whoever would have thought that we would make it through an ice storm like we did? Whoever would have thought that our men would begin to put on makeup and dress like women and the world thinks that that's okay? And, and what's sad about it, the church begins to think that it's, that it's okay. We got to amp it up. See, we got to do something. Because they are doing what they're wanting, wanting to do. They're coming out bold. They're coming out strong. Well, it's time for us to come out too. And, and, and I'm not telling you to go up to somebody and tell them anything. No, I'm telling you to pray and seek his face. What are you willing to give up? What are you willing to give up? Matthew 16 and 24, remember, says, if any man must come after me, you must deny yourself. See, you're going to have to deny yourself of some things. If you want to spend more time with God, if you want to seek him, if you want to find him, you're going to have to deny yourself of some things. It might be you might not want to take that shopping trip. It might be that you might have to turn the plate down there. It, it, it might be that you have to turn off that TV. It might be that you have to put that phone somewhere. Let me tell you what we're in a generation of. Where, where is that phone? Me... And I'm telling you right now, you keep doing this. When it's going to catch up with you, and it's going to hurt your posture. Parents, we like this. Guess who's coming behind us? Guess who coming behind us just like this? We can't even stay off of this in church, y'all. I'm talking about grown people right now. I know you might want to egg me or tomato me. We can't even stay off of this in church. That shouldn't be, people. This is just like you sitting up talking to your neighbor in church, and you should not be. We're going to be scrolling through, checking on the weather, checking on whatever, checking on those uh, texts and messages. Come on, y'all. I know some of us might have jobs that might require us to have that. That's okay. But even, even when we're in church now, even teaching our children to teach, we want to keep it. We use the, the, the phones to keep them quiet. And I, you know what? I understand that. I got a baby. I got a, a baby Graham, and, and she likes that YouTube. <laughs> she likes the very hungry caterpillar. 
And we use them to keep them quiet, but don't forget to teach them how to behave when they are in the house of the Lord, y'all. Teach them how. Teach them how. Because the best thing you can do is to be an example. It's one thing to talk, but it's another thing to show them the right way. You have to do something. I'm getting ready to wrap this up. And I have a question for you. What is the, what is just one thing that the Holy Spirit has been unctioning your heart to turn from? Just, just one thing. We could do the, he, he'll do it one at a time. One thing, y'all, can we, can we give that one thing up? Are you willing to start with that one thing, just one? What are we willing to give up? What are we willing to turn from? What are we willing to make the exchange? And if God is not prompting you, if the Holy Spirit is not unctioning you to, to turn away from something, it's probably because you're not listening. I'm just... Because he wants us to grow. I will never get to a point to where he said, well, if I get to that point, he's going to say, come on home. But as long as I'm in this life, I'm growing. And he's going to be after me to turn me away from something that's not best. To turn me away from something that might be sinful. One thing. I want you to walk out of here with that on your mind. You got to do something. One thing. You know what the Holy Spirit has been after you to turn away from. I don't. That is between you and him. And if you know that one thing, you, you know what it is because it keeps coming back. It just keeps coming back. It just keeps. <laughs> we know what it is. So brothers and sisters, just remember, we got to do something. If we want God to hear us and forgive us and heal our, heal our land, we're going to have to humble ourselves. We're going to have to pray and we're going to have to seek his face. And then we're going to have to turn. We got to turn from the wickedness that we do. We don't want to be like the world. And I, and I got one more, just one more thing for you. And you might ask, well, well how am I going to turn? It's too hard. I, I just can't do it. No, you're right. You cannot do it by yourself. But here's what Romans 12 and 1 says to us. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world. Don't be acting like the world. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. See, the mind has to be renewed daily. Yeah. Then it's going to have to be renewed. If we want change, if we really want to change, if we really want to grow, we're going to need to start to give God, giving him more of our time, paying more attention to him, and not passing the bug, but knowing that when we hear the word of God or when we read it, it is speaking to us. Y'all, I'm, I'm going to be frank with you. I have many times. I have many times listened to the word of God and said, mm-hmm, she should have been here today. I'm telling you, yes, I have done that since I have been very convicted. And when that thought comes up, I take that thought into captivity and I cast it down because it is not for me. That is arrogance. So I say, Lord, is this word for me? Is this word for me? Don't give up, y'all. Don't give up. Don't give up. God is still on the throne. Don't give up. I, I like that little bit uh, of, of that song that, that Mary Mary uh, was singing. And they sang, I just can't give up now. I've come too far from where I started from 
Nobody told me that the road would be easy And I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me Sing, I just can't, I just can't give up Father, we come to you this morning again with bowed heads and humble hearts, hearts full of love, thanksgiving, and praise. Father, we thank you for being God and being God all by yourself. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to enter into this place one more time to hear a word from you. And Father, we pray that somebody was convicted this morning and will have uh, uh, the mindset to want to uh, uh, be obedient to your word. To seek you, to find you, to turn from our wicked ways. And watch what you will do, Father. Father, we just want to thank you. And now may the love of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest rule and abide with us now and forevermore. And all of those in attendance saying, Thank you, you may be excused. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. What a mighty God we serve and what a mighty word we heard on today. We know, we don't believe, we know that you received something if you heard this message. You have received the dynamic word from the Lord. The woman of God told us that we need to seek, that we need to turn, and then God was going to do something. So that says if we act, God is going to act. Is that right? Amen. Yes. We are sure to find him because he's there. And if we turn from our wicked ways, yes. he's going to keep some promises. He said, then will I hear from heaven. Yes. And will forgive their sins. Say so. And heal their <laughs> land. Ain't God a good God? He's Amen. He's not just going to leave us without anything. Without he's anything. He's to do yes. something. Yes. But he's going to do the bigger something. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. What is the title? You have to do something you have to do something people of God and the woman of God has just explained to you that we have to seek him 
that we have to turn from our wicked ways and then God is going to act on our behalf. So we thank God for that word on today. We want to thank you and we pray that you can join us here in person at Galilee Missionary Baptist Church at 721 West 19th Street. Also, we want to let you know that our Sunday school starts at 9 o'clock a.m. and we have Bible studies on Wednesday at 615. We hope to see you next time on the Worship Hour.